This chilling photo depicts the final faint of a stowaway on board a commercial airline. The photographer had captured the fall by complete accident, the chances of which are inconceivably low. So who was the stowaway? What was going through their mind when they made this decision? And just how risky is it to stow away on a plane? <laughs> Stowaways have existed for centuries, secretly boarding transport vehicles without obtaining permission or paying the fare. Historically most famous for hiding aboard ships, stowaways are still prevalent today, travelling on vehicles like trains without a ticket and avoiding detection. One craft you might not consider to be a viable target for this activity is the airplane. The security that ensures the only boarders are verified passengers is generally very strict, particularly for modern commercial airlines. You aren't going to get on board a flight from JFK airport hiding in a suitcase. But there is another way. If you could somehow manage to sneak onto the tarmac, you could hide in a plane's wheel well, the part of the undercarriage that houses the landing gear. You can probably guess that stowing away in such a manner is incredibly dangerous. You can climb up into the wheel bay while the craft sits on the tarmac, but the compartment opens up when retracting or deploying the landing gear, meaning the risk of falling during takeoff or landing is very high. Retracting landing gear also poses the threat of crushing the stowaway, as the bay is designed to accommodate the landing gear with little room for much else. In the unlikely event you survive these mechanical hazards, well, your ordeal has only just begun. As the plane rises in altitude, hypothermia starts to kick in as temperatures drop. Depending on your journey, the temperatures could drop to as low as minus 63 degrees Celsius, and that will freeze you solid. Unlike the cabin, the wheel bay is not pressurized, so as the altitude rises and the atmospheric pressure drops, your body will struggle to absorb oxygen, leading to hypoxia. You'll pass out and die of oxygen starvation. But before that, the change in pressure could give you decompression sickness, and dissolved gases start to bubble in your blood, giving you an embolism. If the flight is short enough, you could perhaps survive the lower altitudes the plane maxes out at. In that case, you're one of the lucky ones, and if you haven't been too badly affected by hypothermia or hypoxia, then your only permanent injury is hearing damage from prolonged exposure to the high noise levels outside the cabin. So it's dangerous, but what are the facts and figures? A US Federal Aviation Administration researcher documented 113 stowaways on 101 flights between 1947 and 2015. 86 of them were killed, that's a 76% fatality rate. Most of the survivors received a lengthy hospital stay due to their injuries, some life-changing like frostbitten extremities. All these stowaways were male and they were predominantly under 30 years of age. Many were unable to be identified and many were only discovered when their dead bodies were found in the wheel bay or on the tarmac. It's thought the undocumented number of stowaways could be much higher, with victims falling into the ocean or remote areas, never to be found. For the price of an airline ticket, it's well worth avoiding the risk. It's also obviously illegal, so you would need to somehow survive all of that and still be able to sneak off undetected after landing to avoid trouble, a near impossible feat. But not everyone seems to be aware of the danger. Australian Keith Sapsford was just 14 years old when he found the allure of adventure too attractive to resist in 1970. Sapsford's parents say the youth was powerfully drawn to the idea of travelling and was dissatisfied with life in Sydney, Australia. To satiate his wanderlust, they took him with them on an extended overseas trip, but upon returning, Keith was more restless than ever. Sensing he needed more discipline and structure in his life, they sent him to Boys Town in southern Sydney shortly after, a Catholic education institute that specialised in troubled teens. Even this was not enough to hold Sapsford back, and just two weeks after arrival, he escaped the institute. He knew his escape would be short-lived if he returned home, so instead he made his way to Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport. It was the 24th of February 1970. 
After sneaking onto the tarmac, Sapsford found a Japan Airlines Douglas DC-8 and climbed up into the wheel well. It's not known if he was aware the plane's next flight would be to Tokyo, but he certainly wasn't aware that this action guaranteed his death. He was only wearing a t-shirt and shorts, meaning the journey into the air was basically a death sentence no matter what happened. After waiting in the wheel bay for hours, the plane eventually departed. On the ground, amateur photographer John Gilpin is taking photos of the airport and of the planes coming and going. As the Japan Airlines flight takes off, Gilpin takes this photo of it, inadvertently capturing Keith Sapsford as he plummets from the wheel well 200 feet to his death. Gilpin didn't even see it happen and had no idea he had taken a photo of someone's death until he had the film developed. Through sheer chance, an otherwise unremarkable photo was transformed into an incredible and harrowing picture, and John Gilpin would have been none the wiser had he lost the film or simply neglected to have it developed. You might think that such a tragedy stems from the fact that 1970 was just a different time, but the truth is these incidents still occur to this day. In 2023, in Amsterdam, a body was found in the undercarriage of a KLM Dutch Royal Airlines flight that had originated from Lagos, Nigeria. The cause of death was believed to be hypothermia. In 2022, another KLM flight to Amsterdam, this time originating from Johannesburg, South Africa, was boarded by a stowaway. The 9,000 kilometer journey lasted 11 hours and amazingly, the unidentified man survived, although he was hospitalized with severe hypothermia. 2021 saw numerous air stowaway incidents as well, both fatal and non-fatal, albeit injurious. So it's more common than you probably realized and it's definitely more common than it should be. The risk of a gruesome death is incredibly high and if by some miracle you do survive, you're surely worse for wear. It must certainly be a traumatic experience and shouldn't ever be attempted. Although many who do so aren't simply trying to avoid paying for a ticket. It's an act of desperation, a form of frantic escape. Many stowaways are seeking refuge or asylum. Even still, you'd have to wonder if they fully appreciated the hazards of this before doing it. Maybe some only realize the full extent of the danger in their last moments.